Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to uh, hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if they do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that they do not believe. In this state, they should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that they do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the Day of Judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All right? Let's grab Galatians chapter 1. Give me verse 6. This is Galatians chapter 1. Give me verse 6. What did you learn about in school, TJ? Uh, that Muhammad was God's last prophet. He is the last prophet? Yeah. It wasn't no prophet after him. All right. Let's and, see what happens. And, and, hold on. Wait, let me finish. Don't worry, let me finish. There's a tall view. This is about misery. A mosque? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They taught you about a moth. They, they taught you this in school? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of the Messiah unto another gospel. And he said unto another gospel. Right? Yeah. Another gospel would mean another what? Another preaching. Yeah. Another good news, right? Yeah. I mean, somebody come talking about some Islam and this is the way to find God. I mean, that's good news. You know what I'm talking about? It's just another good news. So he's saying somebody's trying to give you some other, you know what I'm saying, something other. They're trying to tell you some other stuff. You know what I'm talking about? What happened? Which, wait, are you talking No, go ahead. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of the Messiah. He had to clear that thing up real quick. Because he just told you it's another good news, right? It's another gospel. Then he came back here and like, no, which is not really another. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Don't get it twisted. It's not another. You know what I'm saying? But some people will have you believe in this another. Right? Keep going. Watch this. But though we or an angel from heaven preach. The who? We are an angel from heaven. He said, even if we, right? Even if Paul walked up and told you, yo, Muhammad is the last prophet. Or an angel from heaven? I don't know. Muhammad, his own testimony, he said Gabriel came to him. That's his testimony. He said, man, I saw Gabriel and Gabriel came to me. And he told me this, that, and the other, right? Right? That, that's his testimony, right? He said, though we or an angel of what? Of heaven. Okay. What else? Preach any other gospel unto you that which we have not. Listen, preached. if anybody come talking about anything else, whether it's me or another angel, and they come talking to you about anything other than this book, what say? What it say? That which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Mm. You know what curse means, TJ? Uh, like, if you, like, oh, your body changes. Or oh, yeah, your body's gonna change. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something, your body's gonna change. It ain't puberty, though. You know what I'm talking about? We ain't talking about puberty. We talking about, like, you know what I mean? That's it. Curse means you marked for death. Damnation. You right? That's it. You walk around cursed, that means you done. You understand? Yeah. He said, if an angel came to you talking that, that foolishness, he said, even if Paul came to you talking that foolishness, let him be cursed. Let him be marked for death. Let him be done. Just walk around done. Right? That's how we got to look at it. See, let me tell you a little bit about Mohammed. You know what I'm saying? Mohammed. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't enough homage, so they had to get a little bit of Mohammed. You know what I'm talking about? Let me, tell, let me tell you a little bit about the man. You know what I'm saying? According to his testimony, he's a descendant of what they call Ishmaelites. You know what I'm saying? You know Ishmael? Oh, let's talk about Ishmael. It's Genesis. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk a little bit about Ishmael right now. It's, uh, what I want, Genesis, what, 14? 15, 15, 16? 17, maybe? 17 going to be what? Uh, that's a promise. Yeah, that's going to be a promise. 
Well, it might be there, right? No, it might be. It came before the promise, right? Let me find that real quick. Talk a little bit about Ishmael. You know what I'm saying? 16 is when you look at them, the Muslims, you know what I'm saying? They, this, they don't tell. Listen, I ain't, I ain't never going to put nothing, you know what I'm saying? I ain't going to put nothing in nobody's mouth. The man said that the angel came to him. I just want to show you the book. You know what I'm saying? Oh. The book. Or what? Said that in the book, yeah. It said the angel came to him, didn't it? I mean, I ain't going to lie. I'm, I'm not going to lie. If that's what they say, I'm going to take what they say. I'm just going to show you that they can say it however they want to. It's never going to line up with our book. Always, they always going to show themselves out to be a liar, no matter what. Right? So he said an angel came to him. They also going to tell you that he's a descendant of Ishmael. Right? He comes from the Ishmaelites. Let's talk about the Ishmaelites. You know what I'm saying? I'll show you, I'll show you all their daddies. Right? This is daddy. Let's talk about their daddy. Where we at? Genesis 16 is when he <coughs> kicked out Hagar. This is Genesis chapter 16. What verse I want? That's a nerd to talk to talk to the boy about Islam. You know what I'm saying? What you call it? Uh, <laughs> what they call it? Uh, what? what what's the name of it that they called it? Islam. Islam? They talk to they talk to the boy about Islam in school. He got some darn nerd. Let me come up there. Why? Why they won't let me talk to the kid? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You talk to the kid about Islam. Just give me thirty minutes. I will light they butt up. All you but all your parents going to darn hell. What? Uh, Chase me out of that school so darn fast. Uh, what about Genesis? Like what sixteen? What? Sixteen is when Hagar and Sarah was beaten. Yeah. What verse? Uh, this starts with it. All right. This Genesis chapter sixteen, verse one. Then. Now Sarai, Abraham's Abram's wife, bare him no children, and she had a husband. Man. Uh, handmaid, an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. Uh -huh. And Sarai said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing. I, I don't want that. Him. Give me 18. Okay. This is Genesis chapter 18. Give me verse 1. Well, I don't want verse 1, but help me out. This is Genesis chapter 18. What I want, verse like 6? Now, this is when he's pleading for Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, Alright, 19 maybe then? Uh, let's see. That's when it's destroyed. That's when he's telling the yeah, get on out. 21 yeah. would be the birth of Isaac. All right, so that's why I want 21. Yeah, 21. Okay. I apologize. Genesis 21. I've been, you know what I'm saying? I've been traveling. My brain ain't the same. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? This is Genesis chapter 21. What verse? Uh, we can start at verse 1. Yeah. Verse 1, that ain't too much? Mm -hmm. I just want to get right to it. Okay, we can do nine. I don't want to have to get lead the people in suspense. We can do 9. All right, so this is Genesis Chapter 21, we're going to start at verse 9. You know what I'm saying? They talk to the kid about Islam. They want to talk about Islam. Now, now, I mean, let's be fair. They said in the book, when they, when they start reading it to you, they're saying, there's like an angel came to him. This is Mohammed, right? An angel came to the man, right? And then from there, he said, I know God, right? He's trying to tell him, this is how you get the people to God. I'm going to tell you what else. They probably didn't tell you this part or what else. They said God is Allah. Ah, they said God is Allah. Mm. And there's five uh, pillars. There's five what? Pillars. Five pillars, huh? Mm -hmm. You know what that five pillars is? Giving to the poor, to Zakat, and the righteous. Sound like Islam. I mean, uh, nation of Islam. Zakat. There was. Your teacher, a male or a female? Female. Female. Black. What the next open house? That's all right. We don't care nothing about them five pillars. You know what I'm saying? We tear all them things down. If they good, they came from our book. If it's good, a lot of it's going to be good only because it came from our book. Right? We do fasting. Right? And we do, we do, we do prayer. You know what I'm saying? We do healing. You know what I'm saying? We give, we we definitely give to the poor. That's all. That's that's all our book. That still came from us, right? But what they tried to do is they tried to take what they could from our book, and then they built on it. And I'm about to show you why, right? Go ahead. It also says that they pray five times a day and they pray anyway. Yeah, they have to stop. You know what I'm saying? They stop and they kneel down and they start praying. You know what I'm saying? If you go to over in they land, they sound this big old horn every time they're starting to pray. They, you know what I'm saying? Then it's time to start praying. You know where that come from? 
Oh, we gonna do some talking tonight. Yeah. We gonna do some talking tonight. You know what I'm saying? We gonna do some talk. All right. So hold on. We gonna first. We gotta talk about their daddy. You know what I'm saying? Whenever you gotta look, you gotta always go back, TJ. You know what I'm saying? Whenever somebody gets to talk to you about somebody, you just wanna go back. Say, okay, when did this start? You know what I'm saying? Like, when did it begin? You know what I'm saying? That's what I need to know. When we talk about what, what we talk about, what are we gotta take it all the way back? Who are we taking it back to? Gotta take it back to Moses. That's when we started. I mean, you can go back before that, but I mean, in terms of how we believe, that thing started with Moses, right? It got its refreshing with Yahushua. But it started with Yahushua too. We just didn't know that until Yahushua came in the flesh. You know what I'm saying? So now we gotta take it back. We gotta take they step all the way back. You know what I'm saying? Cause we thought we trying to learn about Islam. They talk about Islam. Let's get all the parts that they didn't, they left out some stuff, TJ. I don't think it's right that they left it out. Let's figure it out. So this is this is uh we gonna learn about Islam daddy. You know what I'm saying? This is uh Genesis whatever. This, this is Genesis chapter 21, verse 9. Watch this. Boy, you ain't growing. You can't sit on the darn chair. What's wrong with you? <laughs> and Sarah saw. And Sarah saw Hagar, the Egyptian, which he had born unto Abraham, mocking. Uh huh. That's why she said unto Abraham, "Cast out this bondwoman." Cast out this bondwoman and her son. And her son. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son. Hold on, hold on. Let me figure this out. She said, "The son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son." You know what the heir is. So an heir is like when a dad dies or when a dad is, is no longer taking control, he passes everything he, he has down to one of his sons or one of his children. So the heir would be the one that are the ones. It could be more than one, but it would be the ones that he chooses to give everything he has to. So say, say a dad is a king, right? I'm a king. The heir to the throne would be the next king. So when dad dies... Then his son becomes a king, right? So your dad, when when your dad, you know what I'm saying, when he dies, he's going to have a will, right? He's going to have something to hand down to you, right? So it might be his house. It might be whatever, right? So he's going to say, you know what, TJ? When I die, all this becomes yours. You seen the Lion King? You know, you remember Lion King when, when, uh, when, uh, when uh, Mufasa, you know what I'm saying, was on top of the mountain? And he says, everything the light touches is your kingdom. Mm -hmm. You remember that? That's because that was his heir. He's telling him that one day I'm gonna die, and when Mufasa died, what happened? To, what happened to Simba? Mm. I mean, he but ran away. He went out there with Timon and Pumbaa and did all that crazy stuff. But after a while, the Nala came to go get that. But what happened? Mm. He came back, and he was what? Because okay. he's the heir. Yeah, my man eating bugs. Yeah, out there, just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that just sometimes that's just how that thing go. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just gotta be wild. That's why we try to teach you, right? That's why we try to teach you. Remember, I was talking to you when you were talking about your, your grades and all that. That's why I was trying to tell you. We try to help it to where you gotta. You don't. You ain't gotta be like Simba and you run out there in the wild and all that. We try to make it to where you can avoid all that. That was a big waste of time. Simba could have came back, could have went that scar when he was young. You know what I'm saying? All that. Th that thing would have worked out. You know what I'm saying? He would have had backup back then, but no. When he went away. It left room for Scar to come and make a mess. Same thing with our life. You know what I'm saying? Same thing with our life. When we go away and we start doing that, the devil come in our life and make a darn mess. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how the Most High God wanted. He said, okay, you do that, I'm going to do this. Period. And the Most High God sent the devil to just make a mess of our life. Right? So now, we got to trace it all the way back to get the daddy here. You know what I'm saying? The daddy of Islam is going to be uh, Ishmael. And let's hear about Ishmael some more. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. Okay. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. Okay. And God said to Abraham, let it not be grievous in your sight because of the boy and because of the bondwoman. Okay. And all that Sarah has said unto you, listen unto her, her voice, for in Isaac shall your seed be called. Who's, okay, hold on. And who shall the seed be called? Isaac. Not Ishmael, right? Ishmael just got kicked out of the house. Mm -hmm. And he said, in Isaac shall the seed be, she be called. Guess who had a son? Guess who Isaac's son name is? Isaac? Mm-hmm. I'll help you out. His name is Jacob. And guess what God called Jacob? Israel. And guess who we all descend from? Well, most of us. <laughs> <laughs> we all descend from Israelites. Right? 
So it's in Isaac, our daddy, right? Is where his seed was called, right? Yahushua. Yahushua comes from Isaac. Guess who Muhammad comes from? Ishmael. Ishmael got kicked out. Ishmael was told by Abraham that he's not going to be a part of this promise. Right? So now that's why Ishmael had to have a son named Muhammad. And Muhammad has to come up with some wild story that he got from some angel that lied to him. He probably really heard from an angel. But let that angel be a curse. It wasn't Gabriel. Right? But the angel might have told him. Right? The angel might have came to him and might have told him, hey, my name is Gabriel. And he believed it. But it's not. It's important for us to know the book. Because we have to know enough to say, even if an angel speaks to me. Somebody saying they're an angel, even if it speaks to me, it has to line up with what the book note says. And how do you know what the book says unless you know the book? You can't. Right? That's why we come here every week. We come here every single week because we need to know what the book says. Because yeah, we never know. Somebody might come. It might even be somebody who looked like Paul. Or it might be an angel. Right? And they might tell us some crap. And we'll mess around and believe it. But if we know the book, we can say, nah, that's not right. You hear me? God ain't never chose a prophet outside of Israel. A Hebrew. A prophet will always be a Hebrew. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 18. Then I need, uh, help me out, help me out finding out when the horn blow. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, Daniel. Daniel chapter, uh, probably three. Three? three. This is Daniel 3. Find me, find me where the horn blow. I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna break down all this stuff. Look, they, they have you believe that their religion started in, uh, in, uh, in about, like, after 500 AD? That's what they tell y'all. You know what I'm saying? When they, did they tell you when the religion started? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? They, that's what they tell you. What? How many chapters in there? It's like a really big. Huh? It's like a big history book. And they're probably going to go into like Chinese dynasties after that. Huh? It's supposed to be like history or something. So she's telling me like uh, next week I think they're going to start on like Chinese or something. Okay. So, you know what I'm saying? Just tell, just tell her, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know what I'm saying? Let her come in there and teach the class. You know what I'm saying? Like, have her, you know what I'm saying? It just got to be equal. Like, yeah, let the, let the kid learn about it all. Let me come in there and teach them a little bit. I'll light all y'all butts up. Right. What you say you want to know? Gracious. This is Deuteronomy chapter 18. I want Deuteronomy chapter 18. Give me verse what? 18. Verse 18? 18, 18. This is Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. Well, I feel like nine. I've been off all day. Goodness gracious. It's Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. He said he is. They say he is the last prophet of God? Okay. Let's hear about it. Let's hear about the prophecy. I like prophecy. You know what I'm saying? I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Among their what? Brethren. Like unto you. I mean, but if Ishmael got kicked out, that means he ain't none of us. So we came from Isaac, in which the book say, your seed is going to be called. Talking to Abraham. Right? Then he didn't say nothing like that to Ishmael. Ishmael ain't got no message like that. Ishmael ain't got no promise like that. So then he told us, the people who came from Isaac, he said, uh, it's going to be one of your brother that he's going to call a prophet. Let's hear about this prophet. And we'll put, like unto you, and we'll put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Uh-huh. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not listen unto my words. Oh, no. Whosoever shall not do what? Listen unto my words, which he shall speak in my name. I uh -huh. will require of him. These people can listen to Mohammed if they want to. But the prophet which shall speak, which shall presume to speak a word in my name. Uh-oh. I wonder who this is talking about. Which I have. Listen, don't let nobody tell you that. Muhammad ain't in the Bible. They, the Bible talk about Muhammad. Let me show you. He talks about him right here. Watch it. The prophet that shall presume to do what? But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, uh -huh. or that shall speak in the name of other gods, uh -huh. and that prophet shall die. That's Muhammad. Is Muhammad alive right now? Uh, no. Did they tell you he is dead? Uh, yeah. Thank the Most yeah. High God. I appreciate him for it. I appreciate him for it. 
Thank the boy. I light these darn Muslims up. I ain't got time for this stuff. What's wrong with these people, TJ? Cloud of them. I was wasting time. Te teach the boy some darn math. She wasting time teaching about Mohammed for it. He gonna teach him about it. Teach him he a lar darn liar. Teach him none of his stuff panned out. He ran the darn mouth. Ain't nothing darn happened. You gonna teach the boy something about the Muslims? Look, I teach something about the Muslims. You wanna know something about the Muslims? Our people was in darn Africa. You know what they used to do to our women? They used to take our women and sell them to the Europeans as slaves. And the women will, they, they rape our women. They take advantage of our women. They hurt our women. Then they throw them out and kill them. They ain't gonna teach you that about the Muslims. The Muslims did that for a, almost a thousand years. They did that to our people. To this day. They ain't gonna teach you that about our people though. They ain't gonna teach you that about the Muslims. The Muslims raped Africa. They told, you know what they told the Africans? All over Africa. They went to them, they went over they, they, to their place and they tried to take over their empire. First they tried to, you know what I'm saying, like cozy up to them. Now after a while they tried to take over their empire and they said, you know what? We'll leave you alone. If y'all got Muslims here. Anybody who a Muslim, it's good. If you're not a Muslim, it's jihad. You know what jihad is? They call that holy war. Right? They scream jihad. That's me. That means they're they trying to go to war in the name of God. In, in the name of Allah. They got. Right? But let me show you the difference. You ever heard of the Twin Towers falling? You ever heard of 9-11 Twin Towers falling in, in New York? They don't teach y'all about that in school? Probably not yet. It was, it was two big towers that all these white people love. I mean, they used to love them darn towers. Right? Then you got some Muslims. They threw it. Well, they say it was Muslims. It's probably white people and Muslims working together, you know, you know, who know. But <laughs> bottom line is, planes flew into those towers and they came back, right? When they asked why did that happen, the white folks told us that the that the Muslims said that it was because of jihad. You ever heard of ISIS? No. So there's a whole group overseas right now. They call themselves Muslims. They running around killing folks and chopping off Christians' heads. And you know why they say they're doing it? Because of jihad. Right? So they claim that they going to war for God. For Allah. For they God. Right? But actually, they just sinners. You know what I'm saying? They ain't nothing different. They just darn sinners. All they doing is all they doing is making a darn mess of their darn self. But they're not going to teach you all this. Right? They're going to try to teach you some, some politically collect, correct version. You know what I'm saying? Your teacher might even be a Muslim herself. You know what I'm saying? Who knows? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Hopefully, you know what I'm saying? Your, your pops get a chance to talk to her, break her butt down a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, you look at it, they're not going to teach you all this. They're not going to teach you that the Muslims are the ones that put us in. You heard about the slave trade, right? The slave what? The slave trade? They ain't taught you about the slave trade? You mean tell me they, tell, they teach you about Mohammed and they ain't taught you about the slave trade? We said that books on the slave trade. Um... No, but they should have been teaching about the slave trade. That's all right. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get to it. You know what I'm saying? We're going to learn all this stuff. What happened is, you know what I'm saying? Yo, and for Thanksgiving, they're going to talk about a whole lot of stuff. They probably talked about a whole lot of stuff. Just talk about the, the, the Nia, what is it? The Nia, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. <laughs> they talk to y'all about that? Back in my day, they used to talk to me. They used to light them boats up. The Nia, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. They didn't talk to you about them boats? I heard the Pinta. The Pinta? They might have got rid of the other two. They probably found some lies on them. Like, okay, we can't teach that no more. Right? But they used to talk to us about three boats that the Pilgrim, you heard the Pilgrim? Came over, the pilgrim, and they start messing with the Native Americans. They don't talk to y'all about that? I don't know what they be teaching nowadays, you know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? They, they came over in the Nia, the Pinta, according to them. Nia, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. These are all ships that they came over in, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't come over in them boats, right? The, oh, that's the boat that the white folk came over in, right? It's a bunch of Europeans. They came over in that. Then it's a lot of other boats. But they had named like Jesus of Lubbock is what one of the boats is named. And there's a whole bunch of other boats that they gave name to. Those are the boats that the Hebrews came over in from Africa. Right? And we came over as slaves. You know who gave them the routes? Who told them where to go to find those slaves? Muslims. Right? They're not going to teach you all that about the Muslims. If you're going to teach, I mean, if you're going to teach people about, I'm fine. Let's teach about Muslims. I can do a whole lesson on Muslims. Let's teach, let's teach it. But let's just, like, I don't want to leave nothing out, though. Right? I teach you what they believe. I'm fair. I'm, I promise I'm fair. I'm fair. I will teach you what they believe. They believe his name is Allah. Right? Not that his name is unfair. Not that his name is Allah. 
but Allah is how you say God in Arabic, right? So, I mean, let's just say, let's just be fair. If I was Arabic and I was still believing according to the Hebrew faith, I would still say Allah, right? I would still say praise Allah, but at the end of the day, I would say praise Yahuwah. They're not going to say that, right? I'm going to be fair to them, right? They also believe Muhammad, right, was a man who tried to make peace with our people, and, each, and, and let's be fair, in some instances, he did set up territories in Arabia for our people to live at peace with the, with the Muslims, right? Now that he died, some other people took control, and now that changed, right? But while he was alive, he also did some, some messed up stuff to our people and allowed it. But there were some cases where he allowed some territory for us to, you know what I'm saying, to work with. You know what I'm saying? He admired our people. You know what I'm saying? He looked at our people. He wanted to, you know what I'm saying? He kind of wanted to that's emulate us. At. That's where he got all his information. He that's admired, how I came. He admired our laws. He admired how we kept ourselves. He admired our book. He admired the Bible. So he took the Bible and tried to add on it his own faith and tried to get us to join with him because we were the original people. I mean, you know, it kind of feel weird when it's like, hey, I really, really admire you. You know, we we are stuck up people. We don't really play that. You're a Gentile. You know what I'm saying? We don't really play that. You know, there's a lot of us. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We wrong for it in a lot of cases. You know what I'm saying? But you know, it's a lot of us. We like, we Hebrews. We God's chosen people. We this, we that. Especially at that time, when everybody knew who we was. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't no secret. Now, it's a secret. Don't nobody know. You know what I'm saying? But back then, everybody knew who we was. You know what I'm saying? We said, no, we God's people. You know what I'm saying? What you talking about? Boy, you can't get your butt. Don't, don't put your dirty, nasty, Gentile hands on me. What's wrong with you? So, you know, he trying to admire us and be like, yeah, I want to be. But certain groups of us is like, no, nah, we're not messing with Gentiles. Like, we don't touch Gentiles. That's crazy. Right? So then, then at that point, he like, how can I flip the script on these boys? I'm going to take they book, and I'm going to say, I'm the last prophet. I mean, and maybe an angel really came to him. Right? Just with no angel of God. I ain't saying angel. He might have saw some stuff. Because the man, I mean, to his dying day, the man held on to what he was talking about. So something might have happened. I'm just saying it wasn't the angel of God. How we know that? Because God you never chose nobody outside of Israel. The man just told you, if when I read the prophet, the words that I put in his mouth is going to be required of him. And guess where that prophet going to come from? Your brother. That, thing, that means the words that came from Yahushua going to have to be required of people. And if Yahushua wasn't the last prophet, and the next prophet after him is not talking what Yahushua said. That means let that man be a curse. Or that angel. I don't know other way. I don't, I don't know how to put it any other way. That thing just don't line up. Everything gotta line up. You gotta be able to trace it back. You know what I'm saying? If you start something and I say, you know what, this came from the same Hebrew God, that thing gotta connect with the Hebrew writings. Right? You know what the book is called? What is what is Muhammad's book called? It's the Quran. You know what I mean? Quran. The, the Quran. You know what I'm saying? The Quran. You know what I'm saying? He got the Quran in there. You know what I'm saying? You Quran, it got all that stuff written down. And it claimed that it came from our book. Nah. Nobody off. They ain't got authorization. You know what I'm saying? They ain't got authorization for that. Give, give me a... Uh, give, ooh, what I want. Ah. Goodness gracious. I used to know this stuff about heart. Uh, second Titus. It ain't no second Titus, is it? Second Titus? No, no. ain't no darn second Titus. What you gonna say? Some darn second Titus. Titus two. It's Titus chapter two. Give 19. me nineteen, eleven. Okay, eleven sounds right. Give me Titus chapter two, verse eleven. Then I'll let you go after that. I appreciate you sharing that with us. You know what I'm saying? That's what you gotta do. You get to, you know what I'm saying, you learn some stuff in school, you always want to bring that stuff down to your parents. You know what I'm saying? We're going to do it every week. Yeah, okay. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with learning. You know what I'm saying? Really, ain't, 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 nothing, ain't nothing wrong with learning. It just, you just got to know enough to not let what you learn turn your mind. See, that's what a lot of this stuff do is turn your mind. You always got to have yourself settled in something that's real. That's why we come here, so we can learn and make sure that all this stuff that we learn outside of here, you know what I'm saying, we can filter it through the book and learn what's right. You know what I'm saying? There ain't nothing wrong with running. I, I didn't learn all I didn't learn about all these people lies. You know what I'm saying? And all it do since I'm since I'm grounded in the book, all it do is it make me a little more wise.
I said, a little bit more wise. I can tell, okay, I can spot a lie coming a mile a darn way, God willing. Sometimes these lies give you, you know what I'm saying? But for the most part, we can spot a lie a long, a long ways away. And that's just because we know the truth. You know the truth, you can spot a lie. It's only people that's unsure about the truth and don't know the truth. That one's like, well, I don't know if that's a lie or not. That's because they don't know the truth. It ain't their fault. They don't know the truth. Nobody talk. Let's go. You got teaching, though. You got your daddy. You got me. You got everybody in this room. You got teaching. You ain't got no excuse. For the grace of God that brings salvation has to appear to all men. Okay, hold on. The grace of God that brings salvation, it appeared to who? All men. Oh, goodness. Muhammad wasn't even there yet. So the grace of God that brings salvation came way before Muhammad came into the picture. Okay, let's hear about it. Having what seal? Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly no. lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Uh-huh. That's not what I'm looking for, though. No, you're looking for... Uh, what is that? What is that, though? That's Titus 2? So give me 2 Timothy, what? 2.19. All right, give me 2 Timothy 2.19, then. Uncle. Yes, sir. I saw our Judah. I saw Judah burning down Jerusalem. Fake gods, fake images of gods used in the picture of the book. Judah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That sounds a little bit more right. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about no <laughs> images. I, know, I, I don't said, know about no images. I said, like, what these people look like? Yeah, were they white? If I want to see too. Were they black? They had like brown skin? They were stick figures. Yeah, you know how they do. They try they tried to put it in the middle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They try to put it in the middle because they don't want to, you know what I'm saying? They don't want to pick a side. They look like up. You look around this room. Minus Tasha and Nanaka, you know what I'm saying? That's what they look like. No, there's, a, there's a few of them that look like Tasha and Nanaka. Every now and again, you know what I'm saying? We had Gentiles mixing us too. There's a few of them that look like Tasha and Nanaka. You know what I'm saying? I got wider nose. That's a fact. That's a fact. Her daddy's black. Her daddy's black. My wife's daddy black too. What you saying? I'm saying your daddy is black. You crazy. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, Okay, 19. All right, so this is second, second Timothy 19, 2, 19. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Look, nevertheless, right? The foundation, remember we talked to you, you always got to get to the beginning. That's what's called the foundation. Nevertheless, the foundation of God is stand sure. In other words, that thing's strong. You can send a twin tower plane to it, and that thing ain't going to fall. That thing stands sure. Having what? Having this seal. What's a seal? Uh, I mean, like, if I go, if I go, like, get a business license. Approval. What they gonna look for at the bottom of that thing? I mean, it, that thing gotta be stamped with an approval. So it says having this approval, having this seal. This is a, a seal is like a sign. Like you see it, and you know, okay, that's the real deal. Right? The seal is how you know that this is legit. Like, this is a legitimate document. Right? So what makes what makes the foundation of God that stands sure look legitimate? The Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that names the name of the Messiah depart from iniquity. Why well, don't say everybody who named the name of Muhammad? Mm -hmm. That wouldn't make no darn sense. That would make no darn sense. These Muslims are sinners. They hypocrites. The ones of them that know what they're doing. Some of them are just working out of ignorance. And they future sinners and future hypocrites. Because as soon as they figure out what they do and they still do wrong, oh, that's a sin. Books say if you know to do good and do it not, that's a sin. I'll talk to them. They'll find out. It ain't going to take them long. They'll find out what you're doing is wrong. That stuff don't make no darn sense. But I mean, you know what I'm saying? The way they do it, they, they operate themselves, especially in the nation of Islam, they operate themselves in a way that's admirable. Yeah. Wear suits, you know what I'm saying? Strategic, got a security team. All that stuff is stuff. Listen, anything that's good out here, guess who it's made for? Mm -hmm. Hebrew, not Hebrew, no, let me be more clear. Disciples of the Messiah. The righteous. Right? The, the righteous. Right? Anything that's good. Anything that you look out there. I had a guy tell me, yeah, man, you stole, you stole, no, nah, no. Nah, I saw I saw you teaching, but you stole that from so-and-so. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Still have no. <laughs> that thing was mine. You know what I'm saying? I heard it, and that thing was mine. What you mean? It was for the righteous. What I'm gonna look like? Somebody preached the same thing I preached, and I'm gonna come back to him and say, "You stole that from me." How stupid do that sound? God. That thing is yours. That you righteous? What that thing was made for you? He said, "He who gathers with me is with me." You know? What did what it look like for God sitting here complaining? They tried to get him. Man, there's somebody out there that's baptizing in your name. Ain't that what we just read? Is somebody out there baptizing in your, way, your name, y'all sure? Do you want us to go get his butt? He's right there too. What you? Leave him alone. Let him alone. He got his with me. He got his with me. We on the same team. That's his. That's what this is about. I ain't stealing from no darn body. Ain't nobody stealing from darn me. If it, is it the truth? Is it right? It came from God. Any good thing came from God. How you steal? Who we steal it from then? Right. <laughs> the, man, the man told us to say it. He told us to say the truth. Who is it stolen from then? Better pick that stuff up. Take whatever I darn right. Is it right? Or oh, I'm telling you, that's mine. You know what I'm talking about? It's true. I need all the truth. I need everything that's right. That's darn mine. Let me hear it. Let me hear somebody teach something right. I'm going to repeat it for the rest of my darn life if it's right. That's crazy. You stole it. You better get out of my darn inbox talking this foolishness. Boy, what's wrong with y'all? People's hearts and minds be in the wrong place. Yeah. It's pride. How, what type of pride is that? Somebody teaching the truth that's going to save people and you accused of stealing that. Who got the rights to the truth other than the Most High God? Right. I ain't never seen nobody copyright truth. That's crazy. And if they do, they're a darn sinner. Somebody might mess around trying to copyright the truth. They ain't lost their darn mind. All right, man. Let's go ahead and talk about some, talk about some books. Pastors get right off, you know what I'm saying? That ain't gonna be true, but yeah, that thing gonna be true. You can copyright that. Let me tell you something. You can copyright the purpose driven life. That thing ain't gonna, that thing ain't gonna bother me at all. You can copyright the mess out of that. I ain't trying to steal that book at all. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? A praying wife. You know what I'm saying? Volume one, two, three, and six. You know what I'm saying? You can copyright them things, you know what I'm saying? All day. My bad, baby. You know what I'm saying? I didn't mean to get all your books. You know what I'm saying? But you can copyright that thing. That's, I mean, that's fine. That's their words. You know what I'm saying? There's some profitable stuff in there. I ain't gonna lie on them. You know what I'm saying? There's some profitable stuff. Right. You know what I'm saying? You can copyright that. When it comes to the book, though, when it comes to what's gonna get you salvation, no, you can go ahead and keep that, that C with a circle. You can go ahead and move that thing off of that. You know what I'm saying? We ain't got no time. That's God's word. You know what I'm saying? What you talking about? Right. We done talking about Muhammad? We done talking about Muhammad? All right. I appreciate you sharing that with us and giving us an opportunity to tear some stuff down. I got to pay attention out there. I appreciate that. All right, where we leave off last week? You want to sit down and listen? Mm -hmm. All right, your time running out though. <laughs> where we leave off? Uh, judges. What? Uh, judges nine. So we probably on judges ten now. We about to start talking about Jeff. That's right. Yeah. Let's talk about my man. I pull up my notes and stuff. Well, actually, we didn't finish 9. No, we stopped on 9.24. We stopped on 9? 9.24. Wait. No, no, no. 10, 10 right? 10, 10, 10. 10.18. That's all right, though. Yeah, Let's start. So now we're on 11. Now we're on 11. So this is, uh, this is Judges chapter 11. Give me verse 1. It's Judges chapter 11, give me verse 1. <laughs> now, Jephthah, the Gileadite, was a mighty man of valor. Mm -hmm. And he was the son of a harlot. And Gilead begot Jephthah. Uh huh. And Gilead's wife bare him sons. Uh huh. And his wife's sons grew up. And they thrust out Jephthah and said unto him, You shall not inherit in our father's house, for you are the son of a strange woman. That's just like uh, Muhammad. Then Jephthah fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tob. And there were gathered vain men to Jephthah and went out with him. Mm -hmm. 
with him. And it came to pass in the process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. Mm -hmm. And it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tob. Mm -hmm. And they said unto Jephthah, Come and be our captain that we may fight with the children of Ammon. Look, you know what I'm saying? They kicked Jephthah out. But then when the problem came in, like, yo, Jephthah, bro, what's going on? Why don't you be our captain? Because they know Jephthah got them hands. You know what I'm saying? He read it. You know what I'm saying? Let's hear about it. And they said unto Jephthah, come and be our captain that we may fight with the children of Ammon. Mm -hmm. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, did not ye hate me and expel me out of my father's house? Uh -huh. And why are ye come unto me now when ye are in distress? Mm -hmm. And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, therefore we turn again to you now uh -huh. that you may go with us and fight against the children of Ammon and be our head and be our head over the inhabitants of Gilead. Uh -huh. And Jephthah said unto the elders of Gilead, if you bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the Lord deliver them before me, shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jephthah, The Lord be witness between us, if we do not so according to your words. Then Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and captain over them. And Jephthah uttered all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. Uh -huh. And Jephthah sent messengers unto the king of the children of Ammon, saying, What hast thou to do with me? that you are come against me to fight in my land. And the king of the children of Ammon answered unto the messengers of Jephthah, because Israel took away my land when they came up out of Egypt from Arnon even to Jabbok and unto Jordan. Now therefore restore these lands again peaceably. You see that? Jephthah, they called Jephthah. It's a reason they called Jephthah now, right? They called him and they were like, okay, listen, we in distress. I know we kicked you out, but go ahead and be our leader. Jephthah made a quick little deal with him. Like, all right, go ahead and make me the leader then. They abided by the deal, he the leader. First thing Jephthah do is he send a message to Ammon. He said, why are you trying to fight with us over the land? I don't get it. King of Ammon, what did he say back? He said, because you took, the, you took our land from us when you came out of Egypt. This was our land. All the stuff that the Israelites had, that was ours first, right? That was the king of Ammon trying to let them know. Watch Jephthah respond. We ain't talking. Like, right now, we not we not listening to some, some dummy, somebody who don't know the book. Right? Watch how Jephthah run into it. Remember, this is not like all the stuff that Jephthah was about to talk about didn't happen yesterday. Jephthah wasn't alive for any of this stuff. This three, four hundred years ago. Right? Watch this. And Jephthah sent messengers again unto the king of the children of Ammon and said unto him, Thus says Jephthah, Israel took not away the land of Moab, nor the land of the children of Ammon. But when Israel came up from Egypt and walked through the wilderness into unto the Red Sea and came to Kadesh, then Israel sent messengers unto the king of Edom, saying, Let me, I pray thee, pass through thy land. But the king of Edom would not listen unto them. Mm -hmm. And in like manner they sent unto the king of Moab, but he would not consent. And Israel, may, uh, and Israel abode in Kadesh. Then they went along through the wilderness and compassed the land of Edom and the land of Moab, and came by the east side of the land of Moab, and pitched on the other side of Arnon, mm -hmm. but came not within the border of Moab, mm -hmm. for Arnon was the border of Moab. And Israel sent messengers unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, the king of Heshbon, and Israel said unto him, Let us pass, we pray thee, through thy land into my place. Mm -hmm. But Sihon trusted not Israel to pass through his coast. But Sihon gathered all his people together and pitched in Jahaz and fought against Israel. So in other words, Israel went to Edom, like, hey, can we pass? Edom didn't let him pass. Then he went to uh, Moab and said, yo, let me pass. King of Sihon was like, no, nah, I don't trust you. King of Sihon didn't stop it. No, I didn't trust you. King of Sihon said, you want these problems. We're about to scrap. So King of Sihon came out and tried to get with Israel. Okay, so we scrapped. Guess who won? Let's hear about it. And the Lord God of Israel delivered Sihon and all his people into the hand of Israel, and they smote them. Knocked him so out. Israel, Israel possessed all the land of the Amorites, the inhabitants of that country. Uh huh. And they possessed all the coast of the Amorites, from Arnon even unto Jabbok. Okay. From the wilderness unto the Jordan. Okay. So now the Lord God of Israel has so dispossessed this. the Amorites from before his people Israel. And should you possess it? Now he's asking him a question. He sent the messenger to him to ask the question. He's like, now after all that. Did I take your land, or did the Most High God take your land? <laughs> and it wasn't even his land. He took it from the Amorites. But that was their land. The Amorites had it. The Amorites was in there with him. Mm -hmm. Right? But he was like, did I take the land? And he going to clarify that part next, too. You know what I'm saying? He was like, he, the Most High God dispossessed all this. 
and gave it to us. Did I take your land? Let's hear about it. He's going to clarify some more. Watch this. Will, will not thou possess that which Chemosh thy God gives thee to possess? He said, y'all worship Chemosh. If Chemosh gave you and said, you know what? That's your land. Is y'all going to sit here and back off like, oh, my bad. I took it from you. That's why, see, this is why I don't get mad at these, you know what I'm saying, these white folks for taking this land from the Native Americans. That thing don't bother me at all. If they God told them, this is your land, what are they supposed to go over there and be like, you know what, uh, no, nah, Native Americans, my, my God told me, he must have made a mistake. That they God. They don't believe that God made a mistake. They killed some Native Americans. If the, nat the Native Americans is in this land, right? You trying to tell me these Native Americans didn't believe they God gave them this? They killing each other too. Right? They fighting over territory, all that stuff. That stuff is the same. Well, all of a sudden when the white person do all now, it's like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, we be fair, don't we? That they be fair. You know what I'm saying? I don't be, we ain't be on no like, just because you white, everything you do wrong. We don't do that. You know what I'm saying? That thing ain't fair. You know what I'm saying? You gotta be fair. You know what I'm saying? Why, why when the white man takes some land, oh, all of a sudden it's a problem. You know what I'm saying? Everybody you got people America taking over so land much. right now in Africa. You got different tribes, different countries even, taking territory right now at this very moment in Africa. Why ain't nobody looking at that like, oh, no, I can't believe it. No, that's, you know what I'm saying? That thing ain't fair. Plus, the book say most our God choose who we want to get a kingdom to. Yeah. Most our God gave you land, that's it. He said if Kemos gave you some land, y'all going to back up? No, I don't think so. Let's hear about it. He said I'll set up the empires and I'll take them down. And now, art thou anything better than Balak, the son of B Zippor, king of Moab? This, no, this boy know his book. I'm telling you, all this stuff happened years and years ago. He ran down. He's like, listen, don't get it. Don't make a mistake. Let me tell you exactly how we got here. You know what I'm saying? Came to Edom. Edom was like, no. Nah. You know what I'm saying? But he didn't mess with us. But he was like, okay, cool. You see, we didn't storm up on Edom land. Edom say, no. All right, we'll walk around. You know what I'm saying? Then came to Moab. Hey, Mo, can we come through? No. Oh, you want to scrap? All right, well, we won. Thanks. So now we got your land. It's us. You know what I'm saying? Like, we took that. You know what I'm saying? Now we're going through. Man, I'm like, listen. If Kemosh gave you, most of God gave that to us. So now, oh, now you want to scrap me. Do you think you better than Balak? Oh, you ain't never heard of Balak. Let me tell you about Balak. Do you think you better than him who tried to get at us? And guess what happened? What's that? Oh, you know what I'm saying? Who tried to get at us? And guess what happened? Oh, they got laid out too. Let's hear about it. Are you anything better than Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Mm -hmm. Did he ever strive against Israel, or did he ever fight against them? No. While Israel dwelt in Heshbon in her towns, and in Aror in her towns, and in all the cities that belong by the coast of Arnon, mm -hmm. 300 years. Why, therefore, did ye not recover them within that time? He said, we've been, so that's our longest been, right? He said, he talked about stuff that happened over 300 years ago. He said, we've been here for 300 years. And you just now making claim to the land? He said, oh, my, that's crazy. Just not, this is a bad boy we listening to. Like, he ain't, they knew who they were dealing with. They knew what they needed. They were looking like, all right, man, you from a bond woman. Get out. Can you not what you try to do to the person that, who, what, anybody watch Survivor? Yeah. Me either. Me either. I don't, you know what I'm talking about? Me either. Like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, no, yeah. Bro, you look at Survivor, that's how it be. They get on there, right? As soon as they get on there, they be scoping. You know what I'm saying? It's that another okay. So they keep the strong people around just long enough until it's like, all right, we need to get rid of them because that strong person can beat me. You know what I mean? So they divide. You got like three weak people that get together and get the strong guy out. That's what's happening here. Jacob was around at the beginning because he's strong. He's an advantage to him. They start getting older. They like, mm, it's time to get rid of him. So they got rid of his butt. Then they got to some rough and it's like, mm, we need him back. So they go back and get him. Because they knew to fight this war, we need somebody who know what they're talking about. We need somebody who knows how to handle it. So now he come in the picture. You see, it, it, I mean, just a clean, I respect him, just a clean dude. He said, let me lay this out for you. I'm going to give you the history. This is how it started. This is how we got here. We've been for 30, 300 years. Can you tell me why you just now making claims to the land? Right? What you think? What you think the king of Ammon going to say back? Let's hear about it. Wherefore, I have not sinned against you, but you do me wrong to war against me. Mm -hmm. The Lord judge, the Lord the judge be judged this day between the children of Israel 
and the children of Ammon. Mm -hmm. How be it, the king of the children of Ammon. Look, how be it, the king of the children of Ammon did what? Hearken not unto the words of Jephthah, which he sent him. He ain't responding to that. So what are you going to say back? He got that message. He is like, man. You know what I'm saying? Man. He hearkened not. I ain't responding to that. What I'm going to say? All right, keep going. Let's hear about it. Let me <laughs> then the spirit of the Lord uh -huh. came upon Jephthah, uh -huh. and he passed over Gilead and Manasseh, uh -huh. and passed over Mizpah of Gilead, uh -huh. and from Mizpah of Gilead he passed over unto the children of Ammon. Uh -huh. And Jephthah bowed a vow unto the Lord and said, If you shall without fail deliver the children of Ammon into my hands, uh -huh. then it shall be that whatsoever comes forth out of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. All right? So he looked at it. This man, like I said, this man knows his book, right? He's looking at it. He know the history. Then from there, he's like, before I step in here, let me make a vow to God. Because he know God ain't about to just give me nothing for nothing. Right. Okay, let me make a vow to God. Whatever steps out of my house when I get back home, if you get it to me, I'm offering it to you. Right? Whatever step out, that's yours. He know his book. Yeah. Right? He must know about a vow, too. Right? Go uh give me numbers chapter 30. Mm. Grab numbers chapter 30. We're gonna come right back. Let's just give because I just want y'all to know that they, they know who they chose. They didn't choose like no idiot. They like, okay, this man know what he's talking about. He know his history. It's important to know your history. Yeah. Alright. Numbers, yeah. numbers chapter 30. Give me verse 1. I love this thing, man. This book is good to me. That book. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake. You think he just making a vow out of nowhere? All right. The Lord said what now? And the Lord spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, "This is the thing which the Lord has commanded." In Numbers chapter thirty, verse two. If a man vow a vow unto the Lord or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, uh -huh. he shall not break his word. But he shall do according to all that proceed out of his mouth. If a man vow a vow. He shall not break his word. Ain't that what it say? He shall proceed to do everything that came out of the dark mouth. So he know that. When he made that vow, he's like, I know that this is the law. Right? Let's see. Keep going. Let's see if there's any wiggle room. If a woman also vow a vow to the Lord and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, and her father hear her vow and her bond wherewith she has bound her soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her. Uh -huh. Then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she has bound her soul shall stand. So now, if the father make a vow, that thing done. And if the daughter were to make a vow, and the father hear it, and he don't disannul it, that thing done. So, I just had a question. So is that, is that what you said from, like, the wedding or something? Like, you have to have, like, the... Like the father give him away. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's pretty much. Yeah, it's a lot of that stuff. Yeah, in our law, um, you would have to ask the father could you marry her. Then you'd have to give the price for her birth. You know, yeah, so if she's in her father's house. Yeah, you know what I'm if she's not, if she's like a widow or she's just out on her own, then that's different. But yeah, if she in her father's house, you gotta go to the book because the the pops had the authority at that point. Yeah, I'm gonna read it. Okay, now it's okay. Yeah. You know? So now you look at him. He make a vow. Book say you can't disannul that thing. And even if a daughter of his made a vow, right, and, and he heard it, and he don't disannul it, then that thing, it got that. Like, you you bound to it. That's what you have to do, right? So you know this is a man who knows his word. So let's go back. Let's try to figure out where he's going with this, right? He said, the first thing, anything walk out of my house is a burnt offering to you, Lord. Right? I've been coming home hoping butter walk out. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on, butter. Come on out that door, butter. I lit butter butt up so quick. That's not what you have for it, God. Uh, yeah. We're going back to... Uh, We're going back. This is uh, uh, Judges, Judges chapter 11. 11. Give me verse what? 31. This is Judges chapter 11, verse 31. Then it shall be that whatsoever comes forth out of the doors of my house to meet me when I return in peace from the children of Ammon uh -huh. shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up for a burnt offering. Uh -huh. So Jephthah passed over unto the children of Ammon to fight against them, uh -huh. and the Lord delivered them into his hands. All right. Almost like God held up his end of the bargain. Let's hear what's and happening he, next. And he smote them from Aurora even to the Mount of uh, Minnith. 
even twenty cities, and unto the plain of the vineyards with a very great slaughter. Mm -hmm. Thus the children of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. And Jephthah came to Mizpeh unto his house. He came to his house. And behold, his daughter came out to meet him oh. with timbrels and with dances. Mm. And oh. she was his only child. And, and she was what? Her, he had neither son nor daughter. Oh, man. Now his vow was what? The offer does a burn off. Yeah. I mean, his vow, he ain't the first thing coming out that door. That's the offer. Burn off. Yeah, like right. Like, <laughs> right? That's the offering. So now, how do we resolve this? A righteous I mean, this is a man who know his book. Think he a righteous man, right? What are you supposed to do here? It's Deuteronomy. Give me Deuteronomy. Chapter uh, 12. It's Deuteronomy chapter 12. Give me verse uh, 28. Mm. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Give me verse 28. Observe and hear all the words which I command thee, that it may go well with thee mm -hmm. and with thy children after thee forever. Mm -hmm. When thou do that which is good and right in the sight of the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. When the Lord thy God shall cut off the nations from before thee wherever you go to possess them, mm -hmm. and you succeed them mm -hmm. and dwell in their land, mm -hmm. take heed to yourself that you be not snared by following them. All right, so hold on, hold on. So, oh, that's happened, right? He just gave us the history that, listen, we came from this land and we with these people and then we took over their land. So that part happened. Most High God said, when you come and you take over their land, don't be snared by what they do. So, okay, so we did all that. Let's hear about what they do that we're not supposed to be snared by. After that, they be destroyed from before thee. Uh-huh. And thou inquire not after their gods, saying, how did these nations serve their gods? Mm -hmm. And so will I do likewise. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not do so unto the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. For every abomination to the Lord, which he hates, have they done unto their gods, for even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt into the fire to their gods. Uh-oh. So now he said, first thing come out of my house. Right? First thing come out of my house. Guess what? That's going to be a burnt offering. Most High God already told us, though, in his book. He said, listen, don't you go take over all this land and get to trying to do what these people do. You know what? One of the things that they do that I don't like is they be burning their kids. As offerings. So now, let's just say that he thought his goat was going to come out the door. Right? right? right. That would have been a legitimate offering. Right. But then his daughter came out. How does he resolve that? He made a vow. Daughter came out. Right? But it's technically against the law to get rid of her. Right? To burn her as offering is technically against the law. But at the same time, it's against the law for me to go against my vow. So it feels like Let's just, let's just give him the benefit. From his point of view, it may have felt like either way I'm breaking this law. So now one has to supersede the other. Maybe the vow supersedes, right? No? Let's get Leviticus chapter 27. Let me tell you how perfect this book is. It ain't no way around it. Most high God cover itself every way. Anything you do, no, it's a right way to handle that. Yeah, this is Leviticus chapter 27. We're going to start at verse 1. Man said, I mean, first thing come out the door, you know what I'm saying? I mean, that's a burnt offering there. Then the daughter came out. Right? Daughter came out. Daughter said, daughter, daughter came out with the tambourine there, like, woo! And he looking at it like, Whoa, pre pre appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? He looking at it like, your buddy about to burn. Right? Because I got to do it. That's how he looking at it, like, I got to do it. I made a vow. The most I got held up his end of the bargain. What am I supposed to do? Daughter came out. You know what I'm saying? You got to be sick at that point. Right? Watch this. It's Leviticus. Chapter 1. I mean, chapter 27, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speaking to the children of Israel, and saying unto them, mm -hmm. When a man shall make a singular vow. When a man shall make a singular vow. A singular vow means, uh, you're saying singular, and, and we would kind of think uh, like a one vow. Let's say that by the 
And, and that, that might be what we think. But when they say singular, if you look up that word in the Hebrew, it's it's uh it's like saying a go ahead and look it up for me. You uh go to blueletterbible.com. Cause I don't want nobody to think I'm lying. So go to blueletterbible.com and then go to uh go to this verse, whatever it is. What is it? Leviticus chapter 27, verse 1. Right. Two, verse two. It's Leviticus chapter twenty-seven, verse two. So, go to the uh, to, to Blue Letter Bible. Go to that verse. Let me know when you get there. Okay. All right. He said, "If a man make a singular vow, then we gonna find out what singular means." You know what I'm saying? How how they how they got that from that? What what Hebrew word they got that from? So we can kind of figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Make sure we understand exactly what's being said. Get there, yeah. Blue letter Bible.org or dot com. Uh, let me see. Why? Oh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Is it good? Yeah, so this is it right here. So now you click on tools right here. <laughs> now, I'm just saying you was going in. Then they give you all the Hebrew words. Uh -huh. Now, I just want you to go down. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be one word that says singular. Mm -hmm. Shall make a singular. Right? Then I want you to click. This is the Hebrew word right here. I just want you to click. I don't want to click it for you. So you see that that number? Read they read that number for you. It's H what? 86381. That's for the one that's next to shall make a singular. Mm -hmm. Alright, click on that 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 number, that H whatever it was. And then read the definition for me. Did the definition come up after that? Okay. So then. Forget the definition. Read to me all the different ways it's been that word has been translated in the book. Uh, and give me how many times it's been translated as those words. Says, wondrous. Wondrous. Wondrous once and marvelous. Marvelous. And then work eighteen times. Work. Wonders uh, nine times. Wonders. And it says marvelous again eight times. Marvelous. Wonderful eight times. Wonderful. Thing six times. So I mean, so far, what we kind of get from this word. It's something it's saying like something big, right? Yeah, yeah. So in other words, he's saying if a man make like this big lofty vow, like if you get to running your mouth talking about like, look, I'm about to like, you know what I mean, God? Like I'm about to just, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like if you make this wondrous vow, you know what I'm saying? This big old like, that's a heavy vow. You know what I'm saying? Let's hear about it. If a man make a vow, just get to running it. If a man talk himself into something he can't do. Right? Let's hear about it. The person shall be for the Lord by thy estimation. Mm -hmm. And thy estimation shall be of the male from 20 years old, even to 60 years old. Even thy estimation shall be 50 shekels of silver after the shekel of the sanctuary. And if it be of a female, then thy estimation shall be 30 shekels. You know what that means? If I make a vow, something so big, that that thing is against the law for me to even keep it, guess what? You gotta pay. I gotta pay. I don't sacrifice my daughter. It goes to the estimation of the priest. Solomon said, uh, the priest look at my daughter and they say, oh, she a female. Oh, that, that's going to be 30 shekels. Mm. So now the man, all he had to do is say, according to our law, he would have kept his vow, gave 30 shekels to the priest, and that would have called that done. Him and his daughter, they could have enjoyed dinner that night. But let's see what actually happened. And Solomon said, it's better not to vow a vow. Why would you have the Lord mad at you when you vow a vow and can't pay? Or when you do pay and that thing is against the law. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is Judges chapter 11. Give me verse 39. This is Judges chapter 11, verse 39.
And it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father, who did with her according to his vow, which she had vowed, and she knew no man. And it was a custom in Israel mm -hmm. that the daughters of Israel went yearly to lament the daughter of Jephthah, the Gileadite, four days in a year. Mm -hmm. Oh, we missed something there. Oh, you want 35. Oh, okay, 35. Give me verse 35. And, and when it came to pass, and it came to pass when he saw her that he rent his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, thou hast brought me very low, and thou art one of them that trouble me. For I have opened my mouth unto the Lord, and I cannot go back. And she said unto him, My father, if you have opened your mouth unto the Lord, do to me according to that which has proceeded out of thy mouth. He made the vow, and now she coming back and she saying, Hey, if you made a vow, do to me what so now she making a vow. Right? Do to me, just like you know what I'm saying, whatever you said. He heard it, he didn't disannul it, and he made a vow. He didn't so in his mind, oh, we definitely gotta go forward with this thing. Right? But he's not thinking about all of the law. That's how this man knows his book. Right? Don't make a mistake. Whole time we've been looking at this man like, oh no, he know his book. That's how easy it is. You miss one thing. You miss one thing in the book. That thing make everything that you thought you knew void. Right? That's why it's important for us to take our time, pay attention, don't try to move too quick, don't try to go. I mean, because otherwise what will happen is you'll put yourself in the position where it's just like you think you're doing the right thing and you end up making a darn mess and then losing people around you for it. It's not worth it. Keep going, watch this. <coughs> for as much as the Lord has taken vengeance for thee of thine enemies, even the children of Ammon. Mm -hmm. And she said unto her father, let this thing be done for me. Let me alone two months that I may go up and down upon the mountains to bewail my virginity, I and my fellows. Mm -hmm. And he said, go. And he sent her away for two months, and she went with her com companions and bewailed her virginity upon the mountains. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass at the end of two months that she returned unto her father, mm -hmm. who did with her according to his vow, which he had vowed, and she knew no man. And it was a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel would yearly would go yearly to lament the daughter of Jephthah, the Gilead, out four days in a year. All right. So, Essentially, he, he put her on, you know, as a burnt offer, you know what I'm saying, and uh, got rid of his daughter to keep to keep the vow, you know what I'm saying, but for our law, you know what I'm saying. This is a time period, and we talked about this, we repeated this a few times. This is a time period where the knowledge of the Most High God was there, the leadership of the Most High God is not there. It's just like the time period that we're living in now. So it ends up being where everybody just kind of do whatever they feel is right. But had the knowledge been there and had the priest been there to kind of kind of look at him and be like, no, nah. right? Because if he made a burnt offering, he'd have to take it to the priest, mm -hmm. right? But clearly the priest ain't around. He knows the book. Clearly the priest wasn't around and he wasn't considering that. So you know what he tried to do? I'm just going to do it myself. Guess who I'm doing it like? Just like the people that's around me, right? That should give us pause, right? That's why the if you think about what could have, if you take out the sin part, Right? And you just look at, I made a vow, I have to keep my vow. That's not going to stop you. Right? You have to keep your vow, you're going to move forward with it. The part that should have stopped them was the sin. God said, do not do like these other nations, as in burning your children. That's what's going to stop. That's supposed to be like, okay, I made a vow, ends up being my child that I have to do. Most High God told me not to do that. Those are the things that stop us. We can move forward all day thinking about like a positive idea of this is what God want me to do, but it's the things that God don't want me to do. When that comes in conflict with what God want me to do, that's when we have to take pause. We got to be like, okay, hold on, slow down, mm -hmm. right? So what the most important thing for us to know is what not to do. That's what the most like God, most of the time he start off with, you know what I'm saying? You, thou shall not, right? Because he wants you to know, don't do these things. It's a lot of stuff. You can do whatever you want, right? The whole, understand that. When the Bible says freedom in Christ, freedom in the Messiah, mm -hmm. It's saying you can do whatever you want. Just don't do these things. Right? That's why when people be talking about, you know what I'm saying? Like, what does God want for me in my life? Like, I'm just trying to figure out what God want for me, what he want me to do. Do whatever you want. <laughs> be a dentist, be a doctor, be a right. teacher, be a lawyer. Be a, right. Do whatever you want. Just right. don't sin. Like, just, as long as you're not sinning, you have the freedom literally to do whatever you want to do. Yeah. And enjoy it. And be good. Just don't sin. That's the guidance. But without knowing what a sin is, without paying attention to what your sins are, 
then that's when your, your, your life going to a spiral. You know what I'm saying? You're going through all over the place. And that's when you unsure yourself. You doubt yourself. You doubt God. Right? Because you're looking at, well, I mean, I just sinned. And maybe it's not a sin. Now you're trying to convince yourself a lie. And it's like, okay, so now right it becomes wrong. Wrong becomes right. And you're all over the place. Right? It's up to us. You know what I'm saying? It's up to us. The information is here. It just We just got to keep paying attention and keep pushing forward. Right. Other than that, you know what I'm saying? What else we got? Jeff? Any questions? <laughs>